Hey guys, it's Benedette. Um, coming to you today, it is Monday. And excuse us not doing a little podcast last night. We just did not have the time or the energy. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit with today's topic. And we're going to talk about something I talked about in my previous video, which was infertility. I am one of many women that struggle from infertility. And I wanted to kind of share my journey with you. And I'm going to make this like a three-part video, this being part one. Um, and we will answer some questions. I'll go over the whole process with you, what I experienced, and we can kind of start this journey of yours together and feel free always to ask me questions during this video, um, underneath in the comments. So I have three children. My 14 year old son, I conceived naturally. It was kind of a whoops. Um, didn't have to have the help of fertility treatments. My seven-year-old son, I had used fertility treatments. And then lastly, my nine-month-old daughter, I had to use the help of fertility treatments. Um, I was diagnosed when I was in my later 20s with PCOS. I had always had a lot of problems um, in my teenage years and in my early 20s with my menstrual cycle. But I just chalked it up to what all the doctors said is, oh, you just have painful periods. And lo and behold, I found a doctor and she did some scans and found out at first I had PCOS. Um, yeah, it creates painful periods. It wasn't anything I couldn't live with per se, but they did tell me that it causes a increased rate of infertility. Um, about, I wanna say three or four years after that, I was in my 30s, right around um, 31, I believe, I got diagnosed with endometriosis. And that was a huge blow for me because I knew with endometriosis, that was kind of, it felt like a sentence of, okay, you are definitely gonna be infertile. To have any more children is gonna be next to impossible. You're gonna have to live with this pain for the rest of your, you know, your menstrual cycle life and even some of your post menopausal life. So I was really like at a low point getting that diagnosis. Um, but I want to share some hope with you guys because it's not a sentence what they give you. Um, your diagnosis isn't. And the fertility process can seem extremely overwhelming because there are a lot of choices. There are a lot of options. It's a very tiring and emotional process that you're going to go through, whether it's with your spouse, whether, I mean, it's you're doing this alone. It's definitely going to be a draining process and an overwhelming one if you don't have a circle of support. So I'm going to share my journey with you on that. Um, so when I decided with my husband to start trying to have kids again, we kind of just kind of winged it and said, okay, even though I have these two diagnoses of PCOS and I have endometriosis, let's just see, like, is there a hope that we can do this on our own, you know, through timed intercourse or just, you know, with a, a wish and a prayer type of thing. And it did work. Um, in August, um, two and a half years ago, I actually became pregnant and I had a miscarriage. And I knew something was going on with my body because that miscarriage was a lot of pain. I bled for quite a while. I was in the most pain I've ever been in my life. So after that happened, we really did not talk about having children anytime after that in, in the near future because, well, it was just so much of a stress on my body. I feel like I needed to just rest and recoup before I started this journey all over again. Um, about, I wanna say, like our minds changed about nine months after and we had a conversation and I said, hey, you know what, listen, I'm, I'm 35 and I feel like we have to start this process, um, especially with my two diagnoses, if this is the route that we're going to go. And I spoke with my OBGYN and I said, hey, you know what, I need a referral because I don't even know where to begin. I was like many women out there where I had no idea. Okay, my OB tells me that I have fertility issues, but where do I go? Your best avenue at first is to speak with your OBGYN and see who they recommend. Um, I know where we live, there are some, I call them like mass infertility clinics. And that just wasn't something that I was looking for personally. I like a more personal feel when I'm going to a doctor's office. I like to be able to see the same doctor. I like he or she to be able to know my history and to be able to say, hey, you know what, Benedette? You're just not yourself today. What's going on? And I felt like going to like a big, you know, fertility clinic where that's really all 
you know, they did all day long and there was like 15 doctors in the group and they saw hundreds of women a day, it just wasn't for me. So when I let my OB know that, I was referred to um, just, I actually was twin brother doctors and they ran an infertility clinic and it was on a small scale. And the first thing that I had to do was I had to get up the courage to make the phone call and to schedule my appointment. And I'm gonna give you um, guys and gals a heads up that it is not going to be like you're going to get an appointment in most cases within like a week. This is such a demand, this infertility clinics are. I mean, I think I had to wait four to six weeks, I believe it was, for an appointment. And it's, it's a really hard thing to wait when you're already so excited to begin the process. But I'm gonna tell you, through this whole fertility process, you are really gonna have to learn patience and there's gonna be a lot of waiting that you're gonna have to go through. Um, in my case, we didn't know going in if the infertility was just me or it was my husband at the same time. Um, so on our first visit, that is something that we definitely wanted to talk to the doctor about because we only had my information. So I made my appointment and like I said, I based my appointment um, with the doctor I chose after doing research. I wanted somewhere smaller. I wanted somewhere that was more intimate. And I felt very confident going into my first appointment and I prepared myself for it. Um, before you have your first appointment, I think it's great if you can bring all your medical records with you or have them faxed over. And also bring your spouse with you or your partner it's super important. This is not a journey that you need to be going through alone unless you're choosing to do fertility alone. But it's definitely, you're gonna need that support. And there's gonna be a lot of questions that they're going to be asking your partner. And so having them at the first visit is great because your head is just kind of kind of spin with all the questions that you're gonna be asked. <coughs> Excuse me. So on our first visit, um, what you can expect, you're not gonna be poked and prodded at your first visit. It's basically, they're gonna ask you a lot of questions about your reproductive health. Um, if you've had children before, if you have any medical diagnosis, um, your family history and your spouses or partners, family history as well. From there, um, they're, they're going to come up with, I would say a mini treatment plan. And it's just gonna be based off of what tests come back next of how you're gonna proceed. So in my case, um, we wanted to see my husband's sperm count and then we needed to also have some tests done on my end because I have um, two previous children, like I said. And with my last son, it was very simple. It was here, take some Clomid and, and you're pregnant. Um, I knew that this time was not gonna be like that at all. So I had a lot of scarring. Um, I have endo and I have the PCOS. So having the two C-sections with the scarring having the endo and having the PCOS, it was kind of a triple threat. So I knew that going in and my hopes were high, but at the same time, they were very realistic. Um, so I needed to have a series of tests on that he ordered that we're gonna check my tubes to make sure that they were clear and I didn't have any blockages, to check, check my uterus, make sure I didn't have any fibroids or cysts going on at the time. Also, to do a, like a metabolic panel and see where I was at vitamin wise to see where I was at hormone wise because that is super important. Um, and then we were gonna get my husband's semen samples so that we could compare all the factors together. So our first visit was roughly about an hour long. And we left that visit. My husband was oh, really confident. He felt great. I felt confident, but in the back of your mind, you're always like, whoa, I'm carrying around such a heavy weight on me because I have these diagnoses before, and what are my chances now? Is this too good to be true? What if it doesn't happen? And the what ifs are the hardest part of this whole process. So um, I started looking online after this first meeting with um, the specialist to try to find support because I wasn't getting the support um, from a lot of my family, my friends, absolutely. I have the best friends that support me through this process, but I come from a very conservative family and their, you know, their message to me was, oh, so it's meant to be, it will happen. Don't, you know, roll the dice and push luck. You're, aren't you afraid of the side effects? And that was the last thing anybody wanted to hear. So I took to the internet and I found a group on Facebook because who doesn't love social media today? And it was an infertility group. And I felt there that that was a safe place that I could ask the questions 
um, and that I had and talk to women that were going through this process and relate and have someone who's an outlet that would be like, yes, I get what she's saying. We're in the same boat. And I found that tremendously helpful, but it was also very discreet because you knew you could see things there and it wouldn't get out into the public. And it was, a, it was just felt a great place to get a, a wealth of information as well. So I invite you as you begin the process to look for the support. It's extremely important that you have that support and can relate to others that are going through this process. Because for some people, it may be years before the fertility process is over. Um, for others, it may be one cycle and, and you're pregnant. It, it's gonna vary person to person. No two people are the same. So when I um, eventually went and I got all my tests done, I took my husband to get his tests done that he needed to do. We had our second appointment. And the second appointment, you're going in and your stomach is in knots because you are like, oh boy, this is where it's like D-Day. He's giving me my sentence of telling me what's going to happen in my treatment plan. Um, and oh, I'm going to get medication. And my husband kept telling me, you are fine. Don't worry. We're going to get through this together. No matter whatever the diagnosis is, we're going to chug forward and it's going to be okay. So... Um, at this time, at this visit, I remember just waiting in the office. And it was like this big like office table that you would see in like a board meeting room. And I sat across from my husband and the doctor came in, Dr. Bolnick, with his laptop and he set it down and he said, all right, let's go over everything, the good and the bad, and let's see who, you know, who's at fault for this. And he was just very frank when he, when he was giving us the results, which I liked. I'm okay with someone being frank with me. I'm okay with them giving me the reality of what the situation is because a lot of fertility doctors will sell you this false hope that, you know, oh, why, if you take this magic pill or you, you know, do this magic diet, you're going to be able to have a baby. And that's just not the way it goes. I mean, we, we wish it was that easy, but it isn't that easy. So when he sat down with his computer, um, I remember my palms were sweaty and I was holding my husband's hand because I knew deep down it was me. It was me the reason that we were not being able to conceive a child. Um, and that was a huge hit to me emotionally. Um, so he read the results and of course, my husband, Mr. You know, Mr. Positive, I call him, he came back with an excellent sperm count. I was lucky, my eggs came back great. Um, the eggs weren't the problem. It was the PCOS and the endo that were the problem. So, I felt confident, you know, with, he said, we're going to just, my vitamin levels were a little low. We were gonna start balancing out me hormonally before we really chugged ahead um, and said, okay, you're gonna have your first IUI treatment or okay, we're gonna give you the Clomid right away. I needed to do a little bit of self-care and, and body repair. So I just like everybody else thought, oh, okay, I'm gonna go and he's gonna give me this pill that day and things are gonna be great. It is a process and don't expect the doctor to just give you the meds 